Summary of Unlocking Creativity by Michael Roberto. What quality do you think is most valuable in the workplace? You would find that, if you ask your colleagues this question, most of them will say that, the answer is creativity. Although most top management workers will agree to this as well, they don't take the necessary steps to ensure that, the office is bustling with creative energy. Creativity is valued but stifled at the workplace. The corporate culture promotes the linear thinking work style today. You are supposed to do research on your project, the make an analysis of the data you have collected, and finally, devise a plan of action. This might sound good on paper, but in reality, this does not always work very well. This is because you will always be faced with unseen obstacles that, you could not have predicted. A better approach would be to launch a prototype, and then see how it is received. After that, build again and relaunch, and repeat the process. Creativity almost always begins as imitation. Former Nirvana drummer, and current Foo Fighters guitarist, and lead singer Dave Grohl started his musical career by imitating Beatles drummer Ringo Starr. Once he has polished his skills, he realized that, to really stand out, and carve your own image in the industry, you need to be authentic to yourself. He composed many songs which won awards based on his own creativity. Since then, he has collaborated with Beatles legend Paul McCartney. Imitation is beneficial when it leads to authentic creativity. It's said that, most businesses never move beyond the copycat phase, thinking what works for someone else would work for them as well. One problem faced by the corporate sector is getting funding for projects that, don't aim for a high growth rate. These projects might focus on quality, and take time to ripen to give fantastic earnings. But since the growth forecast isn't high enough, such projects don't get funding from executives. This should not be the case, since quality is not something that, should be compromised. Trader Joe's illustrates this concept perfectly. This company does not advertise, and after 22 years of its opening in 1967, it had just 30 stores, all in California. Unruffled by slow growth, it focused on consumer experience, and when 11,000 customers were asked to name their favorite grocery store in 2018, most said it was Trader Joe's. Today, it has 470 stores nationwide, with annual revenue of $11 billion. If you want to get the most out of your employees, create a work environment where they feel secure. You don't need to set up a special creative cell to come up with innovative solutions. People are inherently creative. All that is needed is to let their creativity blossom. When Google tried to pinpoint the difference behind its highest performing teams against its less successful ones, the reason that stood out almost every time was psychological safety. People can spread their creative wings when they are encouraged to participate and speak up in major decision-making tasks, and when they are made to feel like failure is not the end and it's fine to get a few things wrong. Another thing the author points out is that, focus can be constructive, but too much focus will rob you of your creative energy. Distractions are present all over the place at work, where a simple social media notification that is not related to work can prove to take away valuable time. It has been found that, even such a simple distraction can rob you of 23 minutes where you could have worked. But to treat focus as the most important thing while on a project, and eliminating distractions like they provide nothing but harm, is the wrong way to approach things. Too much focus will not provide you with a creative outlet, that, only time can provide. A way to deal with this problem could be to focus on a specific project, and shift to another task when you feel your creative juices running dry, or things becoming too complex. One thing to the author recommends is to have constructive criticism, not just a naysayer mentality. We have grown up in a culture where pointing out faults in a system is rewarded with appreciation. While finding problems is important, the fault finding should be constructive as much as possible. Also, there should not be a specific person who finds out the faults every time. This is because when criticism comes from the same place every time, it loses its value in the eyes of the other members of the team. Another way to deal with this problem would be to have two naysayers on every team, since criticism from multiple sources is harder to deny. In the end, the most important thing is to create a workplace where individuals can flourish. The environment should help individuals to unlock their creative potential, and find witty solutions.